everyone and welcome back to the No Zone. I'm Charlie. Hello, I'm Wanja. Oh, 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 and I'm Marara. <laughs> well, this No Zone is all about classics, but everyone else is welcome. Um, so, uh, with the No Zone, we have fun as we learn that... Okay, I can't hold anymore. Marara, <laughs> what is that on your head? Um, it's a scarf. I know it's a scarf, but why is it on your head? Oh, <laughs> it's because I'm busy with general cleaning of my house. <gasps> oh, okay, okay, that, that, that's fine then. Uh, how long has it been since you cleaned? Um, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I can remember. But what I know is cleaning is boring. <laughs> but Marara, it's important to have a clean house. Oh, then I'd better get right back to it. Whoa, 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 before you rush off. And you can't, we still have a show to do and we have some great stuff lined up today. Yes, but why don't we first go to the chill out zone and meet our studio guests. Come on. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Why don't we start the show by saying a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home. Hello. We are really glad that you're here helping us with today's show. We are going to have a lot of fun. Wow, and our studio guests look so smart, Wanja. Yes, they are. So they won't have no trouble telling us what the Nozod buzzwords are. Cho. Wash. Cook. Clean. Excellent. Now, as you can hear, all these buzzwords teach us about the home. Yeah, now let's try and see how many you can find in our next program. Yes, it's time for Junction Teens. Everyone else? I don't know. I just got here. But yesterday no one came. Oh, I'm so sorry. Finally. Where are the others? Um, I left Nita at home. She's doing the house chores. Then why are you here? Um, because it was her turn today. I'm afraid Nita won't make it today. I left her doing the housework. She was cleaning and dusting the windows. That's so much work. We're just saying that because you have a house help. The work must be done. Cooking. Mopping and cleaning. That's not my kind of thing. Keep bragging, just keep bragging. But one day you won't have a house help and your grandmom and dad will be too old to work. Guess who's going to do all the donkey work? Amisha isn't coming either. She told me how much she's struggling to do her housework and her schoolwork. Oh, I can imagine how tired and frustrated she is by now. <laughs> Spell the word chores. T H O R E S. Correct. Open. Wow, your beat. I know. I don't even know if I'll be able to do my homework. Surely it can't be that bad. It is. I have a brilliant idea. 
that will make our parents and guardians understand we have too much work to do and very little time. Silence on set. When you say action, I want you to gather your books, get up, look at the camera and leave the class. Okay. We all good to go? Brian, are you ready? Ready. Good. And action. My name is Nita, I'm 12 years old and I'm in standard 7. And you know standard 7 means loads of homework. Like now I have to carry all these books home as my homework. And cut. Well done, but we need to redo the last bit. Can you act a bit more sad? Okay. Seriously, in class 7 you have to carry all those books. Just wait until you get there. You'll be given so much homework, the books will want to eat you up. Hey guys, I heard you filming something. Cool stuff! We're shooting a documentary to get our parents to see how much chores can affect our studies. But the last time I checked, children were supposed to share duties at home. So boring. Why should we have to do the housework? So our parents should get house helps. But what if they can't afford it? Children need to work. And besides, you should help the house helps at home. Who? She's getting paid. She should work. Oh, well, let's get on with it. It's getting dark. But... Change of location. Let's head out. Don't forget what we talked about, huh? Yes, Mr. Director. I wish everyone else was here. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. To help other people like Amishi and Bakari who are overwhelmed with housework. Let's just start setting up, then we continue filming. Time is of the essence. Instead of sitting there, maybe you should help us. The director said I should take it easy. I'm the star of the show. Come on, Nita. Stop acting like a stand. Help us out over here. Okay, we are ready to start, Nita. Nita, go to your position. Move 50 centimeters to your right. 50 centimeters? 50 centimeters is half a meter, or 500 millimeters, okay? Got it. Please, guys, get on with it. Otherwise, we lose the daylight. And you have to take advantage of the daylight. Otherwise, we'll be doomed. Is everyone ready? Ready. Good. And action. Hey, I say action. Okay? And action. This is my home. It's where I live with my aunt and my brother. And today, it's my turn to do the house chores. You remember all those books I carried from school? That's my homework. And on top of that, I have utensils and clothes to wash. And I also have dinner to make. And since you're only the three of us, I have two days a week that I have to do all this work. And it's just so overwhelming. And cut! Well done, Nita. Well done. Nicely acted. I wonder how it would have been if it was real. It's real. I don't think filming this will change anything. I have a solution. Before you listen to any of your solutions, we have a scene to record. Now let's do Let's go. That is very thoughtful of you, Bakari and Babu. Thank you, Tichapendo. I believe it's the only way. Something needs to be done, Tichapendo. Very well said. Now, you have to be very careful with this one. It is school property and it's only to be used under a teacher's supervision. But this time, it's a special case. So, here you go. You can trust us, Tichapendo. Thank you. We'll take really good care of it. Okay. The solution is simple. Instead of showing our parents the video, we show it to Teacher Pendo and ask her to tell our parents for us not to do chores. Is that your super bright idea? Yes. What's wrong with it? What is happening to his stay labor and it needs to stop? I think Brian is right. There's no harm in giving Teacher Pendo that video. Then she'll understand why we do not perform well in some subjects. Exactly, that's the reason. This just isn't enough time to study. Yes, let's do that. 
Yeah, it's a very good idea. Good brand. Excuse me, Tia Pendo. What can I do for you? There's something I would like to show you. What is it about? A film on household chores related to academic performance. Interesting. Who filmed it for you? We did it ourselves, but I was a cameraman. Impressive. Mm -hmm. And where did you get the camera from? I got it from a cousin down in Ethiopia as my Christmas present. Ah, Bakari Babu, you're just in time. We are about to watch a film on housework. My name is Nita, I'm 12 years old and I'm in Standard 7. And you know, Standard 7 means loads of homework. This is my home. It's where I live with my aunt and my brother. And today, it's my turn to do the house chores. You see, teacher, what we were talking about? Well, before we get into that discussion, why don't we listen to what Bakari and Babu recorded? This is a story of Nduko, a 16-year-old house help. Hello, my name is Nduko. I'm a house girl and this is my typical day. I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. I light up the juke and prepare breakfast for the family I work for. I then set the table for the family of six. Hey. Why is she complaining? She gets paid, doesn't she? All the bedrooms and I clean the toilets. I go back to the kitchen and clean up all the utensils. After cleaning this, I had to clean the clothes. What a hard life she has. I have so much work to do and I could go on and on and on. What I would like to say is that in a home, even when you have a house help, it is good to help with the work because the duties in a home are many and if we split them, then many hands make work lighter. Thank you. Well done, boys. I can't believe you stole our idea. I tried to tell you all, but you wouldn't listen. It seems like you are all interested in being movie stars. Maybe it's wrong for us to complain. No, it's good that you notice that housework can affect your studies. But at the same time, there's a very big difference between helping at home and child exploitation. But what should you do when we have a lot of homework and we don't have enough time to do our chores? Well, maybe you could start by talking to your parents instead of making a film. I am sure they would understand. But at the same time, you and Nita can split your housework evenly instead of, you know, having a day when you are all overloaded. Thanks, teacher Pendo. You're welcome. It's always my pleasure. But I think you should be thanking Bakari and Babu. Wow, Nduku had so much work. Yeah, and I thought we had it tough. But I still think our video is better than yours. Brian! But I'm glad that our recording managed to change your opinion. I surely did. Well, I don't have time to argue with you. I've got places to be. Hey, you've got another movie to film? Maybe he's off to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> if you must know, I'm going to help Amina, our house, just with some chores. Yeah, really? Yes, some washing and cleaning. It can't be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian! <laughs> That was a really enjoyable episode. Oh yes it was, but I never complain about doing chores. What? Marara, wasn't that you in the presenter zone who was saying that, you know, chores are boring? What? Me? No, Charlie. You should know that having a clean house is very important. <laughs> anyway, what buzzwords did you hear? Chore, wash, cook, clean. Excellent. And we hope that you had all those buzzwords as well. Marara, I know what I heard and you said Sorry, that... Charlie. So, sorry. Wait, wait. I, I thought I had some... Did you hear something? No, okay. Marara, let's be honest, man. <coughs> I, I, I'm sure I heard something. Marara! I, I, oh! oh. by the buzzer! <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we all know what that means. It's time for us to join Teacher Pendo on the Learning Zone for Cool Words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello Teacher, Teacher Pendo. Pendo. Welcome to another exciting episode of Cool Words. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to look at two important roles that people might have. Now, first up, I'd like for us to think of duties of a milkman. Now, who would like to tell us some of the duties that a milkman does? Yes, Tracy? 
A milkman wakes up early to milk the cows. Ah, very good. Someone else? Yes, Amel? A milkman lights a fire to warm water. Aha, well done. Can someone else give us another one? Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. A milkman ensures his milking cans are clean. Aha, well done. Someone else with another idea? Yes, Clinton? A milkman milks his cows in his homestead. Now, are there any other jobs he might do? Yes, Jerry? A milkman repairs the cow shed. Very good. Oh, Teacher Pendo? Yes, Mara. I think a milkman also has to check the fences to make sure that the gate is shut so that the cows do not escape. <laughs> yes, Mara. I am sure a milkman will want to keep his cows safe. Very good. Well done. Now, let's think of other duties that a house help might do. What are some of the chores that a house help will do? Yes, Tracy? Washing of clothes. Washing of clothes. Well done. Someone else? Yes, Ameo? Cleaning utensils. Very good. A house help might help clean utensils in the kitchen. Someone else? Yes, Clinton? Mopping the floor. Uh -huh, very good. The house help definitely mops the floor. Someone else? Yes, Jerry? Feeding the children. Definitely. A house help will take care of any children in the house. Well done. Marara, do you have a suggestion? Oh, yes. A house help might mend clothes. Mm -hmm, that's right. A very good answer from you, Marara. Now, I want us to learn about the present continuous passive tense. That's what we are going to learn about today. Present continuous passive tense. Huh? Teacher Pendo. I think that sounds very confusing. Don't panic, Marara. Let me explain. So the present part tells us that we are talking about something happening right now. And the continuous tells us that it's still going on. Now the passive indicates that we are more interested in the action that is going on than in the person doing it. For example, the cows are being milked. Now in this sentence, the person doing the action is not mentioned. Therefore, the sentence is in the present passive continuous Tense. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Mara. I think I understand now. Very good. Now, why don't you try and come up with some examples using the duties that we talked about earlier? Yes, Tracy. The fire is being lit. Mm -hmm. The fire is being lit. Excellent. Mara? Oh, um, the cow shed is being repaired. Uh -huh. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Ameo? The clothes are being washed. Aha, uh -huh, well done. Someone else with another sentence? Yes, Clinton? The floor is being mopped. Aha, uh -huh, well done. Give us another one. Yes, Jerry? The utensils are being cleaned. Fantastic. Well, I hope you at home manage to join in. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I'm definitely learning more about the different tenses. Mm, it's good to hear that. But remember to keep practicing everything that we learn so that you get better at it. Now, the key to understanding the present continuous passive tense is that the emphasis is on the action being done and not the person or people doing it. Now, we hope to see you next time for more on Cool Words. Is it time for more Speedy Teacher Pendo? Is it time? Is it time? <laughs> yes, Marara. Right now, we're taking another trip with Ma Speedy. It's time for Out There. I've just arrived to a very special place. There are a few of these places all over Kenya, and they're known as SOS Children's Villages. Today, I'm visiting their village in Buruburu, the first one to be built in Kenya. Join me and find out what these villages are all about. Hello, <laughs> Meet Mama Veronica. She has kindly offered to show us around the village and tell us more about the families that live here. She tells me, that all the children here were between a few months old and 10 years old when they first arrived here. Each individual that arrives here is welcomed into a family unit by one of the 10 very special women here, like Mama Veronica, who gives their life to be the mothers of the 10 children in their care. It is great to know that there are people like her out there. 
SOS Children's Villages are not orphanages. They provide well-rounded, loving homes for all these children here, as well as a good education. You only need to look at these happy faces to know what a great place this is for all the children who live here. This village is made up of a total of 10 homes. Each home is made up of 11 very special individuals. A mother and 10 children that together make up the family unit. Wow, these are big families. Let's go meet one of the families. Come with me. All the children who live in the SOS Children's Village come from different backgrounds and all live together here in peace and happiness. Here, they are committed to making sure each child has a home, a life that would provide them with the love, support, values and education needed to grow up to be happy, healthy and well-rounded individuals. This wonderful lady is Mama Paulina. She is the mother to all these children. It's very nice to meet you all. I'm looking forward to spending time with all of you today. Oh, shall we play some games to get to know each other better? Like all the children who live in the village, these young boys and girls come here because they were orphaned or abandoned early in life. They have a loving home and a family to make sure that they will never be alone. Oh, we are all enjoying these games very much. <laughs> and it's a great way to get to know each other. It's tea time! All that playing has given me an appetite. Mmm. Let's not forget to wash our hands after all that play. Bananas, oh, popcorn, hot milk, my favorite. Look here, <laughs> there is hot chocolate, coffee, and tea too. What a treat! Sitting around this family table, I feel like I am at home. They've been so welcoming. I truly feel loved. Mama Polly tells me that all the children do their bit in the house to learn responsibility, how to look after themselves, as well as good family values, to make sure that the house is a happy, cooperative, and of course, let's not forget a clean place to live. Here, all these children live together as brothers and sisters. She's really doing a great job with her young family. It's now time to clear the table. Everyone is looking busy. I want to help too. Once the dishes are washed, the table wiped clean and the rest of the chores are done. We can go outside to play. Saying that, why don't I help Evie, Margaret and George wash, rinse and dry the last of the dishes. Let's not forget to wipe the table mats either. Well done, Samson and Patience. Now that is what I call teamwork. Mama Pauline has split the chores so we can finish quicker. I'll help Sharon mop the floors. Look at Steve and Joseph brush and polish their shoes. Now that Mama Paulina is about to cook their dinner, I think I'll help the kids with their homework. I always find it fun to learn. Once they finish their homework, they will be allowed to watch some of their favorite TV programs and cartoons. It's almost time for me to go. But before that, Joseph, Samson and Margaret want to show me their rooms. Look at these comfortable rooms. I think there might be just enough time for me to rest a little on this comfortable bed. It is so interesting to see how these family units and homes are run. Just like any other homes with daily routines and responsibilities for all members of the family. 
And of course, let's not forget meal time. The SOS Villages truly gives all these children a home, a family, and a community to be proud of. I would like to thank everyone here at SOS Buruburu and especially Mama Polly and all her children for welcoming us into their home. It's now time to draw the curtains on my day here and make my way back home. That was amazing. You know, I seriously think we need to start following Maspidi on all of his adventures. No, yes, and I'd love to meet all my new friends at the SOS Children's Home. We should be proud of the people who run the SOS Children's Home and help them whenever we can. Yeah, definitely, most definitely. That's right, but right now, it's time for something a little bit different. It's time for us to get our brains into gear. You at home, are you ready? Are you ready, camera one? Are you ready, camera three? Well, lighting, are you ready? <laughs> I know sound already, because it's time for us to play the big three. studio is buzzing because it's another first right here on the No Zone. We have a boys versus girls edition of The Big Three. Here's how it works, it's all about numbers. Two teams, three sums, five seconds. And whichever team gets most correctly, if it's the girls or the boys, will get to take this lovely books courtesy of the Longhorn Publishers. And if the scores are tied at the end, the boys will move into a tiebreaker question with the girls. Now, here is the sting. You will only hear the question once. You will only see the question written down at the end of the game. Now, more important than that, you only have five seconds to solve each sum. Which means that anything you write down after the five seconds are over and Marara says stop does not count. Are the rules clear? Yes. All right, and I am in charge of the clock. And you at home can play along as well. You have the rules. Here we go, the first sum. <clears throat> Six times eight minus three divided by nine plus five is what? Start the clock. Okay, I hope you've written your answers down because it's time for the second sum, okay? Boys versus girls, are you ready? Yes. Here we go. 8 minus 2 times 8 plus 7 divide by 5. Start the clock. Stop, 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 stop the clock. Ha! Whew. <laughs> this is getting heated. We have one question left. Let's see how everyone does. 12 plus seven plus five divided by six multiplied by three. Start the clock. Game is over, game is over, stop. Game is over. Ha. Oh wow, that was exciting. Oh, and it's time for us to reveal our answers and we hope that everyone at home, you have your answers ready as well. So right. here it goes. For the first sum, the boys, are you ready? What's your answer for the first sum? 10, the boys have 10. Mm -hmm. What about the girls? 10 as well. Okay, Marara, we seem like we have 10 from both teams. Charlie? Charlie, take Six it away. times eight minus three divided by nine plus five is... It's 10. Yes! 10, yeah! Whoa. Ooh, wow, both team got it correctly. Now it's time for the second sum. Okay, the boys, what's your answer for the second sum? That's 11. 
Eleven. Okay. Uh -huh. What about the girls? Forty-five. Yeah, we have a difference there. Yep. Yep. Okay. That Charlie? is a very big difference. Let's see who's right. Eight minus two times eight plus seven divided by five comes to. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, come on. Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So that means the boys are ahead. Yes, Marara, you are right. The boys are ahead with two points. But the girls still have a chance to catch up because we still have one more sum to work out. So, boys, what's your answer for the third sum? Uh, 12? That's okay, 12. what about the right. girls? What's your answer? 12? Okay, Marara, we seem to have to have the same answer. Yeah, that's Let's a tie. See if it's a correct one. All right. 12 plus 7 plus 5. Divided by six times three. Oh. Uh, oh. Come on, Charlie. Marara. Yeah. It's 12. Yeah. Oh, wow. It looks like the boys, you have three points, and the girls, you have two points. And that means that the boys team have won. Clap for them, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you worry, the girls. You have helped Marara with his maths. Yes. And how many sums did you get right at home? Huh? How many? <laughs> hey, put down that remote. We'll be right back. Now, why don't we start the show by telling everyone at home what the no zone buzzwords are. Cho. Wash. Cook. Clean. Now, as you can hear, all these words are about the home. Beautiful. Now, we hope that you are listening out for these buzzwords throughout the show. Yes, and today's topic is the home. Hey, I know where we can go. Let's go and visit Marara's home as we take another trip into the wild zone. Welcome to the Wild Zone. Now, in today's episode, we finally get to catch up with our giraffe. But all is not well. Further along the shoreline, Thompson gazelles and flamingos meet cormorants dropping in, whilst Eland head for shade. A giraffe skips, for some reason, in this Assyrian sanctuary by the lake at the end of the corridor. Enter the lead baboon, heading a veritable army on their wide-ranging quest for anything edible, which is most things. They're frightened of leopards and take evasive action. Don't they know leopards can climb? But they're soon back on the hunt. And now for a really nice surprise. The female giraffe, whose mate we say died in Hell's Gate and fed the vultures, has given birth here in the sanctuary at Assyrian. But there seems to be a problem. It's a mystery why the mother is rejecting her calf. Her milk is crucial to its survival. The birth cord is still there. It doesn't look good.
There's a distraction, some lively warthogs, a zebra, and some impala. A sad loss, but that's how nature can be. Reality. The poor baby giraffe, that's how difficult life is in the wild. Next week, we get to see the circle of life continue. If you want to learn more about Marara and his friends, then you should become a member of the Nozone Club. All you have to do is send us a text with the word zone plus your name and address to 5606. And you will instantly become a Nozone Club member and you will get a cool comic. I know what that sound means. It's time for us to go and join Teacher Pendo for more fun in the learning zone. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello everyone. Hello, Hello Teacher, Teacher Pendo. Pendo. Welcome to this week's Hot Numbers section. Now today we are going to learn about measurement of length. And before we start, I'd like to know if you know what a length is. Who can tell us what a length is? Yes, Naomi? Length is how something long is. Mm -hmm, very good. So what do we need if, for example, I want to measure the width of this board? Yes, Felix? You can use your big ruler to measure from one end to another. Very good. Any other suggestions? Yes, Lemaine? You could also use a string. Aha, uh -huh. good. That can work. But if I need to know the units of measurement, a string might not help me much because it has no units on it. What? Well, did you pendo? Yes, Marara. Now, what about a uh, tape measure? Well, that could work. And I could use a tape measure to measure the length of the board. Now, well done, all of you. I can see you all very a lot. Now, do we all know the unit used to measure length? Yes, Gumatho? Meters. Aha, very good. Any others? Yes, Naomi? Centimeters. Very good. Any other units you can think of? Yes, Lemine? Kilometers. Good. Do we have any others? Yes, Felix? Millimeters. Millimeters. Well done, all of you. Now, starting from the smallest unit, we use millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers to measure length. Now, today, we will concentrate on millimeters and centimeters. Now, I see you all have your rulers there. Now, make sure it is a 30 centimeter ruler. Now, why don't you get a hold of your ruler at home and join in with us as we measure items. Now, do we all have our rulers with us? Yes, yes. we do. Very good. Uh, Mararo, what's, what's happening with your ruler? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> you see, I opened my bag and it, it was, it, I just found it broken. And what were you doing with your bag before you got home? Well, I sat on it for some time when I was waiting to go home, bounced a couple of times and... But wait, I'm not that heavy. I could not have broken it. Well, Marara, rulers break very easily. You have to be very careful with your ruler. But you know what? I have this extra ruler here and you can use it for this lesson. Now... But you have to promise to be very careful with it. Oh, I promise, Japendo. Okay, very good. So use mine. I'm taking your old ruler. Well done. Now that we're all very equipped, we can continue with our lesson. Now, our rulers are divided into what is known as centimeters. Now, these are the long lines that have numbers on them. You can see them right there. And there are the shorter lines in between the long ones. Now, these shorter lines represent what we call milliliters. Now, as you can see, a milliliter is a very, very small unit, okay? Now, you get a millimeter by dividing a centimeter into 10 equal portions. Now, on your tables there, you have um, different lines with different lengths drawn on them. Now, let's measure the first one. How long is it? Yes, Gumato? Five centimeters long. Very good. How about the second one? 
Let's measure. Yes, Naomi. Seven centimeters and... Uh -huh. uh, How many small lines are there between seven and the end of the line? Four. Uh -huh. Four, very good. So that's seven centimeters and... Four millimeters. Well done, very good. Finally, the third line. Marara, make use of your new ruler. Well, the third line is... 12 centimeters. Aha, very good. Well done. Now, is it possible to tell me how many millimeters make a centimeter? Yes, Felix? 10. Correct. There are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Now, who can tell me how many millimeters there are in 12 centimeters? Yes, Lemaine? 120 millimeters. Aha, that was fast. How did you get that? I multiplied 12 times 10 to get 120. 20 millimeters. Ah. Ah, teacher Pendo, I can also do that. <laughs> okay, Marara. So what is 5.6 centimeters in millimeters? Oh, that would be 56. Ah, very good. You're very sharp today. Now let's try the other way around. How many centimeters are there in 78 millimeters? Yes, Gumato? 7.8. Ah, excellent. Now, who can explain how we convert milliliters into centimeters? Well, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I think to change millimeters to centimeters, we had to multiply the number of centimeters by 10. Now, to change millimeters to centimeters, I now need to do the opposite. I will divide the millimeters by 10. Aha, well done. You've got it. Excellent. Well, I hope you at home had a good time as we did. Now you know how to change millimeters into centimeters and how to change centimeters into millimeters. It's all about practice. Oh, yes. And practice makes permanent. Oh, so practice makes perfect. <laughs> it does, Mara. It makes perfect. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time, but please join us next time for more more hot numbers. Now it's time for us to go and check out the latest job in the career zone. I think you're going to like this one, Marara. Really, Teacher Pendo? What is it? What is it? Come on, what is it? <laughs> wait and see, Marara. Just wait and see. Hello, can you tell us a little about yourself? My name is Philip Hecker, and I'm a chef. Uh, How did you find yourself in this line of work? I always loved cooking when I was even a kid, because also my dad used to cook a lot and all that. And it took me almost like an year and a half, because I had to do it part-time, because I was still working and I'm paying for myself. So it took me longer, but after one year, and one year then after that, that's when I joined Carnival as an apprentice. And from, by then, you're sharpened because you get the best of the best. Please tell us what you do in a typical day. Let's say like a Monday. A Monday normally is my day for, for training, house training, where so much is a kind of group of people. We just meet together. First, my training, uh, we start from the, like Nakumat, whichever, you know, I prefer Nakumat because uh, that's where you get everything at the same point. We shop together because if you want to learn how to cook, you first have to learn how to shop. And the items have to be the, the, the right kind of uh, items to produce something good. So we start from there, we learn about shopping, groceries, we come home, do a little bit of hygiene, we start cooking. From cooking, myself I don't cook. If I'm training you, I have to. I ha you have to be the person cooking. So mine is more of a guide. I guide you through and then you taste your own food and then you learn how to present it, different way of presenting it, and you enjoy your meal. So after that, I finish that. Maybe in the afternoon, maybe I'm meeting a client because of the wedding parties, what? You meet a client, you start planning from a wedding, what, 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 what. Or if, if not uh, planning, more of a follow-up. And also, maybe a new place that I have, or maybe there is a food fair somewhere, I have to rush and check it out. So that's a kind of, uh, and since I'm, a marri I'm married and have a family, most of the time I try and make sure I am home and make at least one dinner or two dinners a week. What are the main challenges of your job? Being in a in catering industry, one, you have so many unexpected things that have to come up. Last weekend we had a wedding somewhere, and uh, from nowhere, the rain that poured that day was, you couldn't believe it, the night before. 
So now where we were supposed to cook, it was wet and so we had to change and move like almost a kilometer away from where we were supposed to cook. But the guests have to get their food. You come in and since it's also working and sometimes you're traveling, you know, like I study rollies, whatever, you know, the transport is a mess, you know, those things, because you have to transport the whole kitchen. Like me, I have to transport my whole kitchen, the jikos and everything. You have the breakages, what? Plates and weddings, you know, guys are happy as they enjoy. Glasses, sometimes you pay so much damages. But you're like, you have still to go on. In your opinion, what skills or characteristics does one need in this line of work? You have to be patient and most of, you have to be a down, kind of down person because you'll deal with everyone who feels you're here to serve me. And yes, I'm there to serve you. So sometimes they'll, you know, because also most of the time our clients are, they're tensed. Maybe because of the guests and all these. Even whenever you have guests, sometimes you tense. So you have to know that maybe the reaction that is coming out, maybe it's not per se, it's just attention. So you have to be that person who's patient and willing to just let go and forgive and push on. What advice would you give anyone interested in your line of work? Well, you know, you have to check whether you love doing this. Because if you love doing this, you love cooking, and I've seen so many kids, they love cooking. Cooking per se, you don't have to do it as a career, but you can, it's, it's a lifestyle. To me, that's why I have a daughter. Uh, right now, she's 12 years old. And one of the things that I push is uh, what you eat is who you become. So eating and cooking should be something that, you know, even if you're, you're going to be in a different career, you have to, to, to love it. Because then it means it, it will engineer you to a, to a better person. Because you can influence what you want to feel for the day. So as a 12 year old is be creative. This job is about getting creative. I mean black. You know, just, just be, be, be yourself. You don't have to be like your mama, how she does her cake. Just get creative, sometimes throw in nuts. Because definitely even at 12 years old, you help your mom at home. You help her to do chocolate. Watch programs, watch the BBC food, but all these kind of food, because they give you ideas. You learn so much and experiment. That was my favorite career zone. You know, I could become an amazing chef. Oh, that's because you love food, Marara. <laughs> yes, the only problem is that it has made me feel really hungry. Marara, you do realize that as a chef, you don't really get to eat what you make. But if you're hungry, this is the best time to go for a snack. Go, a go, snack. Go, go, go. <laughs> because it's time for us to get our brains into gear. It's time for the ultimate test of your words. It's time for... Spelly! Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Deep. vegetable, work. 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 work, work. Welcome to Spell It. Gumatho, Clinton and Tracy. You are about to walk out of their shadows into the spotlight to compete for this week's Spelling Champion. And the winner will walk away with this fabulous dictionary courtesy of our friends, the Longhorn Publishers. Each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat, the word will be repeated for you. Each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the higher your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Okay, Gumatho, you are our first contestant. Please take your place at the spelling zone. Gumatho, your 30 seconds start now. Wash, W-A-S-H. Fence, F-E-N-C-E. -E. Bleach, B-L-E-A-C-H. Milk, M-I-L-K. Paint, P-A-I-N-T. Scrub, S-C-U-R-B. <coughs> Neighborhood. N E I H G H B O U R H O O D Bathroom B A T H R Double O M Construction C O N S Time is up. Oh, your time is up, Gumato. Well done. Clinton, you are our second contestant. Please take your place at the spelling zone. Clinton, your 30 seconds start. Now. Brush. B R U S H. Cook. C W O K. Gate. G A T E. Mop. M O P. Polish. P 
P-O-L-I-S-H Slash S-L-U-S-H Disinfectant D-I-S-F-I-C-E-N-T A Homestead H-O-M-E-S-T-E-A-D Curtains C-U-R-T-A-I-N-S Kitchen K-I Time's up Your time is up well done, Clinton. Well done. Tracy, you are our last contestant. Please take your place at the spelling zone. Tracy, your 30 seconds start now. Wipe. W-I-P-E. Chore. Repeat. Chores. C-H-O-R-E. Mend. M-E-N-D. Mow. M-O-R-E. Repair. R E P A I R Split S P L I T Detergent D E T E R G E N T Horsepipe Repeat Horsepipe H O S T Time's up Your time is up Tracy well done Well done all of you well done After that exciting round of spells I think we can all take a break as I reveal the scores. Martha, you did not finish the word construction. Clinton, you did not finish the word kitchen. Tracy, you did not finish the word hosepipe. That being said, in third place, we have Tracy. Let's give her a big round of applause. Which leaves Gumatho and Clinton. Gumatho, you did not spell the word scrub correctly. Clinton, you did not spell the word disinfectant correctly. Clinton, you have seven points. Gumatho, you also have seven points, which means today on No Zone Spell It, we have two winners. Yay! Step forward, Gumatho. Congratulations, you are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Step forward, Clinton. Congratulations. Thank you. You are today's no Zone Spelling Champion. Come, stand, and show everyone at home your dictionary. Another round of applause! Can you please go back to your places, Gumato and Clinton? Congratulations for winning and being this week's Spelling Champions. Tracy, don't you worry. We have a fabulous gift for you for getting all those words correctly, and we'll make sure you have it at the end of the show. That was a legendary round of Spell It. Yeah, and Marara missed it again. I can't believe it, man. Uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, but I think it's time for us to take a little bit of a break. So why don't we go and join Spex, Boomba, Zawadi, and Raha as they take us on another exciting adventure on Bus Stories. Dad, I can't wait to get home. I don't know what the matter is with me. Me too. My body aches all the time. Ha! It's because you're girls. I'm a boy and I have lots of energy. Specs, you know, they've got a point. Don't take their side. Okay, okay. We still have got to wait for the other peoples to come. Why is it that on the day somebody wants to get home quickly, it takes the longest time? <laughs> That's so true. Boomba! Why don't you tell us a story to stop the girls in their complaining? Okay. I'll tell you a story about a boy who was kidnapped by aliens. Yes, this is going to be interesting. So one day, the bus was flying through the sky on their way home. As ever, teacher Mary was there, Chuma was driving, and Raha, Zawadi, Specs, and Bumba were on the bus. 
Now because they were early and everyone had been well behaved, teacher Mary decided they deserved a treat. Chuma landed the bus in a tropical paradise. Outside there were lots of trees and lush plants and a waterhole that looked perfect for swimming. So the magical four got off the bus and were looking at the waterhole. Suddenly, Boomba saw a little green alien in front of him. Don't go into the water, the alien cried. Don't go into the water. Nobody else seemed to see the alien and feeling a little afraid, Boomba made himself invisible. So, whilst Zawadi, Spex and Raha had fun in the waterhole, Boomba sat alone by the bus thinking, who was this alien and what did they want? As the bus flew off, Boomba started to feel better. Maybe he had imagined the alien. But then looking out of the window, the alien was there, staring at him. The alien whispered, I am always going to be with you. I am inside you and there is no escape. Worried, Boomba looked around, but again, nobody seemed to have seen the alien. And when Boomba looked out of the window, the alien wasn't there. He definitely had seen the alien. But what did he want? But what did he do next? I think something bad is going to happen. It's going to be the aliens. It's always the aliens. Please continue. So, when the boy woke up the next morning, he got out of bed and looked in the mirror. What he saw nearly made him faint. The next morning, when Boomba woke up, he was feeling sleepy. Why was he always so tired? He looked into the mirror and who should be staring back at him? The alien. Good morning, Boomba. I told you I'd always be with you. I'm even in your body now. Boomba stared at the mirror in disbelief. On top of his lip, he saw some hairs. They weren't there before. And on his legs and arms, he saw more hair. It must be an alien. Feeling a bit alarmed, he went to school. It wasn't until the journey home that Boomba saw the alien again. Because they had so much fun the last time, Chuma once again went via the tropical paradise. So Boomba was determined to go swimming this time. But just as he was about to dive in, the alien appeared. Don't go into the water. Now Zawadi, Spex and Raha were worried for their friend. They wanted to know what was wrong, but they could not see the alien. So how could they help? Boomba got mad. He shouted at them. Even though he could see that they were only trying to help, he ran away into the tropical forest. He did not know where he was going and he had a mood that he could not control. Eventually, he sat down by a tree and tried to think what was going on. I'm the same. Sometimes I get mad and I just don't know why. Me too. Some days I just feel sad for no reason. Aha! I'm always happy! Really? What about that day? You did not want to play football at lunchtime. And you said that you wanted to be all alone by yourself. Ati? <laughs> I was happy. I was just thinking about something top secret. <laughs> Why don't you finish your story? Well, he did not know what to do. Now it seemed like not only his body had been taken over, but also his mind. Thankfully, help was nearby. As he sat there, he heard somebody calling his name. It was Raha, calling him as loud as she could. Boomba didn't know what to do. He was so confused. The green alien appeared and told him, Stay quiet. Don't say anything. Boomba was fed up of the alien. And deep down, he knew he could trust his friends. So he shouted out. In lightning speed, Zawadi was there. For a split moment, Boomba had thought about making himself invisible. 
but he decided he had to let them see him. They were soon joined by Specs and Raha. Bumba was sorry for running off but explained how his body had been taken over by aliens. The group wasn't sure what to do, so Specs volunteered to read his mind. Specs took a step back and concentrated really hard. As he read Bumba's mind, he smiled. He told the gang that there was an alien inside Bumba, but that he shouldn't worry. It was friendly. Everyone was relieved. Spex explained that the alien was actually part of Bumba. The alien was helping Bumba to grow, but at the same time, sometimes it got confused and told him the wrong thing. And that's when Bumba got confused. Spex explained that he shouldn't be worried about the hairs on his arms and legs. He had them too. Bumba felt a lot better having spoken to his friends. And when they got back to the waterhole, he dived in and finally got to swim. Even teacher Mary and Chuma were enjoying the water. So you see, it's perfectly normal for our bodies to change. It's nothing to worry about. And by talking to our friends, you'll see that it's all fine and part of becoming an adult. That was a good story, Bumba. It's good to know that I'm not the only one. It was okay, I suppose. But I think you made a mistake. What? So the aliens turned out to be good aliens. But I just can't accept aliens being good. Specs! Wow, that was such a lovely story. Oh yes, and it has inspired me. Oh, that's brilliant, Marara. What has it inspired you to do? Well, to have confidence in my abilities. You know, I'm going to prove to you that I'm a good builder. I am going to renovate your house right now. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 my house. No, 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 okay. Let's talk about this after we close up the show, okay? Uh, for our studio guests, did you all enjoy the show today? Yes! Yeah! Well, we had so much fun having you and thank you so much for helping us with today's show. And you at home, thank you so much for tuning in. Come on everyone, let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.